right here is a, a little view of my flight sim set up at home in my home office. Here's what it looks like from the uh, pilot seat right here. So I've been looking for a great sim setup for quite a while now, and I think I'm getting dangerously close to finding it. So let me walk you through everything I have here. But first off, you need a great flight desk. This desk here is about six feet long by about, uh, oh, I don't want to say three, four feet um, wide. So it really has a lot of surface area for me to go store my stuff. Today, right now, there's nothing back there. I'll turn on a little light over here. Um, there's nothing over the corner right now, but typically that's where I'll put all my uh, cameras and battery case uh, that I use. Uh, at the top, I've got a power supply and also a USB charging station, which I can flip on and off right here. That allows me to uh, plug in stuff, like to uh, charge up my iPad, which you see right here, my trusty iPad, just the same place you'd see it in uh, the cockpit of my real uh, SR22. If you followed flight simming at all, you've no doubt come across X-Force PC, uh, which is a company down in South Carolina run by a gentleman by the name of Michael Brown. He's got tons of videos online, so if you haven't uh, seen any of that stuff, go to youtube.com and type in X-Force PC or Michael Brown and you'll see everything you want to know. But suffice it to say, this little rack mounted PC here not only saves me a lot of space, it is absolutely jacked up and ready to fly. It just does everything I could hope that it would do. Um, one of the things I love about this front rack, power, you know, rack mounted PC here is that I can put my USB cables right in the front here. I don't have to reach around back. Here. It uh, makes it very easy on the front end. You'll notice underneath here is a little device here that allows me to put in my SD card which is uh, what I do when I need to update my database. One of the other things I wanted to have on my flight deck area or my, my uh, sim area is some storage space here. So I went and purchased a couple extra rack mounted drawers here, which you can see right here. And in this top drawer, let's see what we've got here. This is where I keep my flight notes that uh, you see me record. I've got, you know, now three years of these. This one started on June 2020. This is where I keep my manuals, my uh, pilot guide here, my pilot, Cirrus pilot checklist, the uh, flight operations manual that you get when you purchase the plane, and then that uber spectacularly big and thick Cirrus Perspective Plus Pilot's Guide. So I keep all those right in here because inevitably uh, something will come up on a flight and, and I'll need to uh, review some information. And so I keep all that stuff right here uh, in the top drawer, of course. Down here, if you spend any time webcasting or making YouTube videos, you wind up collecting a lot of cables, a lot of ties, a lot of attachment things uh, here, uh, various GoPro and, and Verb cables, hard drives. I've got my Bose headset here and you can see I've got envelope after envelope of uh, cables here. That is the left side of my flight deck here. Now, underneath here, you'll notice that I have my rudder pedals and this is a Logitech rudder pedal set up here. Now when I first started doing flight sim over here and it wasn't quite together, I moved the desk, all this whole table here you see is all on wheels down here and so I can move it around. All I got to do is unplug one uh, plug from the wall and I can move it anywhere I want. But the problem was that I had to keep repositioning all of my rudder pedals all the time, even if I moved it six inches and that was kind of a pain in the rear. So I decided to attach a board to the bottom of the desk here. For any of you folks with any carpentry skills, you'll be glad I'm not swinging a hammer for you, but I did manage to get it to stick on there, that little thing down at the bottom is a little something to keep it propped up. Anyway, I don't know if you can notice or not, but because, you know, I could, this cockpit setup from, from here to here can be moved around and that might cause the pedals to move. What I finally figured out is that if I put a couple strips of Velcro on the bottom, you'll see I've gotten two incarnations of this before I got it right, and some Velcro on the bottom 
of the rudder pedals that I can just stick it where I want and if I have to move it I don't have to unscrew anything all I have to do is uh, rip it off that velcro which I can tell you is industrial strength stuff I can have a pretty good go at it and it's not moving so that's the rudder pedals down up, let's come up to the top here and take a look at some of the guts the real guts of this thing in the back one of the items that I kind of grinded on, couldn't decide whether I wanted to do it or not, was the 49 inch curve monitor. It's expensive. Uh, it's probably the most expensive way to go, but I will tell you this, I couldn't be happier with it because this look out the proverbial window is very similar um, it, as it is in the actual G6. I think the, uh, the cockpit is about 49 inches wide-ish in the Sierra. So this is a great kind of feel here and very realistic uh, for me. So that's the Samsung 49 inch gaming monitor. Uh, I've never been much of a gamer, uh, but I do love flying. Okay, down here on the bottom, we'll start to get into the real guts of it. This is a real Sim Gear Cirrus console setup that I purchased recently and uh, I was a little nervous at first. I didn't know for sure if it was exactly what I wanted. It was two G1000 screens, um, which are a little, you know, have all the same function, but look slightly different than the, the screens in my uh, Cirrus. So I had to do a little bit of customizing, if you will. Uh, you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, there's a little piece of cardboard that's been painted black. Over here on the right, same thing. And over here on the right, it's the same thing. Under, I'm not going to pull it off right now, but what it is in effect is two G1000 screens. If you've flown in a Cirrus, you, you'll notice that they adapted the, the uh, G1000 screen. So what I wanted to do was make them feel visually and, and so forth exactly like it is in my plane. So that's why I've added that little bit here. Um, if I ever decided to fly another sim online, I would take those off. But for right now, I'm really happy with it because I only see the buttons on my MFD and PFD that I would see in my actual G6. Uh, here's another great feature of the uh, Cirrus console. It's the Cirrus switch panel. This really, really, really gives you the feel of being in the Cirrus because you're flipping the buttons in exactly the same order pretty much that I would be doing in my G6. And you're doing the startup on your sim and you're, and you're trying to get that feeling of repetition of doing the same thing over and over again, not to be boring, but to be professional. Um, it's, it, it, I, I can't tell you how much I love that. Now, right here is part of the console uh, as well. It has a starter switch, which again, I just love it. The starter switch would be over on the left side on my plane. Uh, so that's kind of where it is, and that's really nice. But it also gives you that feeling of turning on the plane, which, again, reinforces all of that muscle memory uh, that's so important to staying consistent in the flight. Here's three switches here, which would typically be down here on the, uh, on the quadrant or the panel down here. I don't know what you would call that. Obviously, they're not down there. I'd prefer to have them down there, but uh, maybe in a different incarnation or soon, the folks at Real Sim Gear uh, will come up with something that moves these down here. But in the meantime, it sure is nice to have the fuel pump, uh, the, the high boost and the boost. That's a key part of the startup. It is ever so nice to have the physical move of moving those fuel tanks from left to right. Again, building muscle memory. The flaps, flaps one, flaps two, hugely important. I've got it on pause right now. That's why nothing's happening. That is just so much a part of giving you that muscle memory again. Um, now let's take a look at the GCU. Um, this has really been my only, uh, I don't wanna say hang up, that's the wrong word. Um, thing that I wish was better for me. I fly a G6, you know, which is a small, smallish group of Cirrus pilots. I suspect it's growing pretty quick, but still smaller than any other group of, of, of Cirrus pilots. So this particular GCU is, is made for folks that uh, were pre-G6. Now, if you've seen me fumbling around on my GCU in my, uh, my own Cirrus recently, it's because I've spent too much time on this one and now <laughs> my hands are all confused but it really does replicate everything about the G5. Now, 
I don't know if I should be telling you this or not, but I, I think it's actually public news. Um, this, my only quote problem with the real SIM gear is about to go away and here's why. Uh, I'm gonna take over here and show you a picture. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is the new G6 GCU setup uh, that Real Sim Gear is releasing in about six weeks. And what's happened is they've moved some of the dials from up here down to here. You've now got the uh, QWERTY keyboard. You've got the numbers all lined up here properly. A little bit different configuration at getting at the comms and the nav and the course and the transponder and so forth. But more importantly, they've moved the altitude select right here and the heading buttons down to the autopilot panel, which is exactly the way they are on the uh, Cirrus G6 models. On the G6, you won't see a track button here. The indicated airspeed you see up there um, is actually called flight level change on the G6. But other than that, it's pretty darn close. And I just want to thank Jared Barker and all the folks down at Real Sim Gear. Uh, well, I'm sure they didn't do it for me, but it sure made me happy, gentlemen. Um, down below, okay, let's go through that again. You've got your all that stuff here. You've got your autopilot panel, and then you've got a pretty good replica, replica of the Garmin auto uh, or the audio panel in the plane here. Um, now, here's where, in a perfect world, I would love to have that feel of that that Cirrus stick, which I just love. You can get your hands all over. You don't have to don't do this pinching stuff. I don't like to pinch. I like to push and pull a little bit. And uh, that's missing there. But this is a pretty good uh, quadrant if you can get one. Uh, if you go online today, they're selling them for triple, quadruple what you might normally pay for these. Uh, I managed to get one on eBay for you know slightly less than double the normal price. Not too happy about that, but happy to get one. And uh, it's uh, not quite as accurate as I would like, but certainly it takes uh, care of everything I need to take care of um, while we're doing it. Now, you'll notice right here that there I have a keyboard that's extended right now. Okay, I'm going to unextend it here. Uh, when I'm looking just to do some stuff, I can put that right down here so it just goes away. Uh, when I got it in my mind that I wanted to, to have a better SIM setup, one of the things I was looking to get rid of was having to mess around with the keyboard. So this setup here pretty much has done that. All I'm really using it for now are just a very few functions, most of which have to do with views. I mean, here's the shot that I typically use, which is me just looking at my instruments, right? And out the front window here. If I wanna go and check my trim, I click number one and I can adjust my trim down there on the right-hand side. If I wanna go check uh, my flaps, I just hit number two and I go down and I can see the flaps there as you can see on the screen there. If I wanna go uh, back up top, if I wanna go three and check uh, my uh, fuel pump, I can do that. And what I, I don't have a switch for the uh, parking brake yet, but just yet, but I can hit it on number two. And so anyway, then I'm back to uh, out the front window. If I wanna look around, uh, if I wanna look off my left side, I just hit that one. If I wanna go a little bit further on the left, I push the button above at number seven. If I wanna look out the right window down the wing, that's number five. If I wanna go a little bit further behind me, that's number eight. And zero takes me back up top. Um, when you're checking the flaps and you're checking the ailerons and all that stuff during your startup, uh, I just press number six and all of a sudden I'm looking at the plane from the rear and I'll see the ailerons, uh, the elevators move here. And that is pretty cool. So those are pretty much the only things I use now on the keyboard. And one final one, which is uh, my takeoff and go around move mode. I don't know if you can see that right there. I'll put it on and off. Um, let's get rid of flight director now. If I go on T, which is my takeoff go around, I just press it and then you see the pink, uh, the pink wings come into the picture there. Now, another piece of equipment that I got here, which I did not get um, from uh, the real sim gear folks. I got it from a company called Noble Flight System. Flight Sim, who uh, also make a great Sim setup, uh, which some of you know I tried that out. Great, great, great hardware. They've taken a slightly, actually a much different approach on the software side of things. 
Um, the real SIM gear setup here is really dialed in around X-Plane 11 and they integrate into the existing uh, Laminar G1000 setup. And um, while I suspect that in the biggest part of the picture that has some constraints, I will say that the folks at Torx SIM who make the SR22 model have done an unbelievable job and they've built so much function into this that it really became kind of a no-brainer for me. But one thing I loved about all of that Noble Flight Sim stuff was their hardware. Um, and one thing in particular was I now have, instead of having to hoke around with some of these weird sticks, I now have a Cirrus style yoke here and it feels just like the real deal. It's got your push to talk button over here. It's got the autopilot disconnect right here. The trim is terrific. Takes a little getting used to. It's not quite as dialed in as flying the real plane, but I've kind of got it figured out now. And it's just a welcome addition to the plane here. Now, I don't know if you can see, but this chair I've got, which I also bought online on Amazon, a you know high-end-ish gaming chair, which has great lumbar support and all that, all kinds of adjustability. My arm in the plane rests just about at an L angle and matches up right here, and so does this one. So it has so much of the feel I get flying my own SR22 G6 that uh, it, there's times when I could almost forget that I'm flying in my office and not up in the air, except that it's probably not costing me a couple hundred bucks an hour, but not, it's definitely not. So anyway, um, Another feature that for me is just part of my whole flying thing is since I started was having the iPad and uh, the iPad, I think in, in for flight in particular, folks that um, have a plan that doesn't have this brand new avionics <laughs> for flight's got to be the greatest thing in the world because you get synthetic vision. You get so many of the features that have now kind of been incorporated in the G 1000 and you get it for the price of an iPad. And, you know, I have the higher, uh, I don't know, it's a professional subscription, which it makes a uh, big difference, um, but it's it's terrific and I don't fly without it. And so my setup here at home is very similar. Just off my hand in the plane is my iPad in the corner window. And, and that's exactly what I have right here. Um, you got to have a headset. So of course I don't have my Bose A20 set up here, but I do have a great gamer set up uh, uh, headset called Razer. My son told me that's top of the line stuff. So I got that. It's actually really great. It's very comfortable on my ears and uh, makes it nice and easy. That, of course, I just plug into the USB port over here um, and makes it very, very easy here. Now, if I don't want to use uh, the headset, I've got just an you know, inexpensive set of Logitech uh, computer speakers. I'll come around on the other side. On each side over here, uh, there of course is my cigar case. <laughs> you got to have that if you're a pilot. When you're on the ground, of course, and uh, and so that's another addition to the thing here. Now, you'll notice back here. One of the things I love. Um, if you watch any of my videos, you know I like uh, the cables tidy. Not a lot of stuff, and I want to walk around and trip on stuff. It's kind of a throwback to my old rock and roll days where we had a wonderfully talented crew with the band that I managed called Incubus. And uh, those guys taught me the value of cable management. And so when I look over the top here and I see mostly desk, uh, I think, okay, that's not a bad job. One of the little computer gadgets you'll need is a USB hub. That's about it. That's all you need. All of that stuff swings around the back there and uh, uh, is pretty simple. I've got it on hook so that, you know, when I roll this baby back and forth, literally all I do is unplug and, and I am good to go here. Um, in my little area here, um, this has really become my flight office. I've got little pictures that, you know, to remind myself of key things. Um, constantly viewing that uh, fuse panel and the hopes that I never have to get really familiar with it. I've got my little, oops, let's get out of the shadow there. Oh, bad, uh, bad camera works. Let's see, here I am, not a great. Anyway, that is a uh, electrical diagram. <sighs> There's my little bird. Let's get out of the shadow again. Little Cirrus uh, 
seven, six, eight Fox rods here, and of course my Cirrus calendar here. Now in my little area here, I have a uh, blackboard that I use to keep track of all the things uh, that I've got on my mind. Over here are some video ideas, uh, how to use visual approach, um, using a long track uh, to set your top of descent. Simulator setup, we're knocking that one out today. Uh, Calisiris Mountain Flying, I've got some videos from flying up in the mountains at Lake Tahoe with the wife. Uh, of course, we had a little technical issue, so I'm going to try to work those in. I did a Burbank Airport approach the other day. I'm going to rate it C, and I have what I call a back course kerfuffle on the way to Santa Barbara. I also got a list here that will be growing of things I want to use in training here on the sim, and then a list of squawks. There is my Cirrus sim setup. If you are serious about flying, and you're serious about getting better at flying. I don't think there's ever been a better time to be learning how to fly. You can be assisted now by some great equipment, software, and computer power that just wasn't available back in the day. So there's my sim setup. I'll, I'll likely figure out how to actually record properly uh, a flight. And if anybody's got some suggestions how to do that, or if you live in the Southern California area, I might be willing to trade you a little time behind the wheel for a little help in setting all that up. Okay, there you have it. That, my name is Steve Rennie. I am the Ren Baron. This is my Ren Baron Learning to Fly channel. And this is my Ren Baron Learning to Fly sim setup. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Oh.